Hey, welcome back to Prophecy Unveiled the Last Days. This is a podcast that is dedicated to informing you of where we are in Bible prophecy as it relates to world events and to alert you to the soon return of Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to be talking about this coming one world government and one world religion. And then I want to focus on the beast, the beast that will usher that will usher in the coming one world religion. Daniel chapter 7 verses 7, 19 and 23 and Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 speaks of a coming one world government that will crush the whole world. So what is meant by a one world government? It means that the whole world will be ruled by one government. No longer will you have nations with their independent governments, but you will have one government ruling all nations. And the only entity with the potential to be a one world government would be the United Nations. Just think, the United Nations has all the parts it needs to govern the whole world. It's already set up and ready to go. It has the parts right now. Let me just go over some of these parts with you. It has a secretary general, kind of like the president. He is a symbol of the organization's ideals and an advocate for all the world's peoples, especially the poor and vulnerable. Then there's the secretariat. The secretariat is comprised of the secretary general and tens of thousands of international UN staff members who carry out the day-to-day work of the UN as as mandated by the General Assembly and the organization's other principal bodies. Very similar to our president and everybody who works in the White House with him. Then there's the General Assembly. It is the main deliberative policymaking and representative organ of the UN, sort of like our Congress. There's the Security Council, which has the primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. So it keeps the peace and it orders in the unit, it orders in military if necessary. So there is so there is a military in the United Nations, a United Nations military, which consists of, of over 70,000 military personnel contributed by national armies from across the globe. Then there is an economic and social council which is concerned with the economy, social, and environmental issues of the world. There is a World Health Organization. The World Health Organization's primary role is to direct international health within the United Nations system and to lead partners in global health responses. And then finally, there is an International Court of Justice, which is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. So the UN has what it needs to govern the world. The only thing left now is a one world religion. And there's got to be a one world religion. And there's and someone to head it. Now, Revelation uh, chapter 13, verse 11, calls this one world, this, uh, one, this head, this beast, uh, I'm sorry, Revelation 13, 11 calls him a beast who has two horns like a lamb, but speaks as a dragon. So he will be one who presents himself as a gentle lev- lamb, but is really a wolf in sheep's clothing. He will probably be a religious person to head this one world religion. Let me give you some facts. Did you know that on May 14, 2020, the Vatican hosted a major educational event to advance the Pope's global vision of a one world religion. That's right. It's already in the making. They're already, they are already working towards this one world religion. Evangelical, Pentecostal, and other Protestant leaders, particularly U.S. televangelists, have met several times with Pope Francis to advance a communion of friendship and love, 
which is how Pope Francis describes the journey of building Christian unity in the 21st century. So they're using friendship and love and all of those nice things to bring the, the evangelicals, Pentecostals and Protestants into this interfaith, into this one world religion. In 2014, Pope Francis met with televangelists such as James Robeson, Kenneth Copeland, Joel Osteen, and others, and called for a focus on the poor and a simple lifestyle for clergy. There is also an effort to open a one world religion headquarters in 2022. Isn't that something? A one world religion headquarters. The Catholic Muslim Interfaith Council, created by Pope Francis, announces its new Chrislam headquarters opening in 2022 that combines a mosque and a church according to signed covenant. The United Arab Emirates will build a new synagogue as part of a Chrislam interfaith compound that will house, uh, house a mosque and church. So now we not only have the pulling in of the, uh, of, of the Protestant leaders into this one world religion, but now we are joining the Muslim and the Christians. We are we're bringing in an we're bringing an interfaith, uh, create, it creating interfaith relationships, so that we are bringing all faiths into this one world religion. Did you know that there's a great revival going on um, in Iran? Yes. There's a great revival is going on in Iran, and this revival is among Christians. Christians, uh, Iranians are converting to Christianity in huge numbers. Those who previously killed Christians are having visions of Jesus Christ, just as Paul did, who killed Christians. He had a vision of Christ and then was converted, and so they are being converted. This is according to Newsweek. Christian Broad, Broadcast Network and the Voice of Martyrs Radio Network. And Muslims are turning to Christ in great numbers through dreams and visions. Of the 9.2 million uh, people in Israel today, less than 2% are Christians. In fact, about 177,000 are Christians. And Surprisingly, 78% of them are Arabs, according to Michael Snyder of Charisma News and according to Wikipedia. So you can see there's a push to unite all the faiths around the world into a one world religion. Now, the thing that's very sad to me is that uh, we're having these revivals uh, among Muslims around the world, but Christianity is in America is declining. You know, you have your ministers who are uh, preachers here in America who are talking about a great revival, a great revival. There's no great revival going on in America. There's a decline of Christianity in America. The great revival is among the Muslims all over the world. Yes, there will be a one world government and a one world religion. Um, now, let me talk about this beast that will usher in the one world religion. I've already told you that he he Revelation 13 one says he will have two horns like a lamb, but he'll speak as a dragon. He'll be a religious person. That's a religious person. He'll be a religious person, uh, a, a, a deceiver. Because he will make you think he is good and he is gentle, but he's really a wolf in sheep's clothing. So the Bible says in chapter 13, verse 11, and I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon. Verse 12 says, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. Now, the first beast is the Antichrist. And the second beast, this uh, uh, religious person, this one head of the one world religion, will enforce what the Antichrist says, what the first, be uh, first beast says. And he makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. Now, we'll deal with that another time. But the Antichrist will become accepted because he will fake a head wound. 
his head, he will be wounded in the head, presumably dead, but comes back to life. And he will capture the capture most of the world by this. And the first beast, the second beast will uh, cause all the world to worship the first beast because he does come back to life. But look, folk, it'll all be fake. It'll all be fake. He, he will not come back to life. He will fake it. He will. He may suffer a wound, but he will pretend that they will pretend that he he died and then he comes back to life. Verse 13 says, and he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men. So just think when the first beast, the Antichrist, fakes his death, comes back to life. He's already captured most of the world's attention. And so now the second beast can uh, uh, he performs miracles and great signs and and that draws him in even more. It's deception. And verse 14 says, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which was given, which it was given to him to perform in the presence of the beast. So God allows him to perform these miracles. You know, in uh, Second Thessalonians chapter four, it says because people don't want to know the truth, God will give them over to uh, believing uh, falsehoods. He will go give them over to the delusion of falsehoods. He, they won't be able to believe the truth because they don't want to believe the truth. And so here we they, they will be deceived by the works, the miracles of the second beast of the uh, this religious head of the one world religion. And. Uh, verse 15 says and there was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast might even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed okay remember he's an enforcer he's gonna he's gonna cause the world uh, uh, he's gonna make the world uh, do whatever it, the antichrist wants them to do and he's going to create an image of the Antichrist. And he's going to uh, make the world worship the Antichrist. But remember what the Bible says, thou shalt not, wor- thou shalt not worship idols. God uh, uh, have idols. God does not. That's one of the things that he hates. He alone wants to be worshipped. But this beast, this religious leader who heads the one world religion, he will make the world worship the image of the beast and if you don't do it you'll be killed now kind of sounds like the mandates that are going on right now doesn't it you know we're being uh, here in the United States and all over the world they are mandating vaccines for COVID-19 and and they're saying if you don't take the vaccine you can't do this you can't do that you're fired from your job well this is like a mandate You have to worship the beast or you'll be killed. Verse 16 says, and he causes all the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. So this one world government is and 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 one world religion is not going to just rule the poor. It's going to rule everybody, including the rich. Now, you have some who say that the COVID-19 vaccine uh, is the mark of the beast. No, it's not the mark of the beast. Because what I just read in verse 16 says that the mark will be in the right hand or on the forehead. But we can say that the vaccine, uh, COVID vaccines may be a prelude to what's coming. Uh, because even with the COVID-19 vaccines, as I said before, there are mandates. And if you don't follow the mandate, this will happen to you or this will happen or this will happen. Kind of like what's going to happen with the mark uh, with when the Antichrist is on the scene with his mark. Verse 17 says, and he provides that no one should be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. So you won't even be able to buy food. You won't be able to do 
anything, nothing without that mark. And it seems like it's coming to that right now. Uh, uh, it's coming to that right now with this COVID-19 um, mandate. We're moving in that direction. <sighs> yeah, as I said before, there will be a one world government and a one world religion. And the time of these events will not be a pleasant one. You know, again, some of you might be thinking, oh, wow, one world government, one world religion sounds good. It won't be good. It will not be good. The only way you'll be able to survive the difficult days we're in now, because we're in difficult days right now, but it's only going to get worse. I hate to say it. It's only going to get worse. I don't care what anybody's telling you what the preacher says It's going to get worse. And the only way to survive these days are to accept Jesus Christ or is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. So won't you get on your knees right now and tell him that you have sinned and you need a savior? That's all you got to do. Lord, I've sinned and I need you. I need a savior. First John 1 9 says that he is faithful and he's just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all your uh, all unrighteousness. All you got to do is ask him. And he will do. He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse you from those drugs. He'll cleanse you from that fornication. He'll cleanse you from from uh, whatever it is, tobacco, whatever it is. He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Won't you do it today? I would love to give you a free copy of my book, Daniel's Apocalypse, Revealing the End Times, where I explain verse by verse the book of Daniel. You know, the book of Daniel is not easy to understand, but God has anointed uh, those to uh, anointed people. And I'm one of them to understand the book because now is the time. You know, at the end of the book of Daniel, uh, God told Daniel to close the book because this was not the time to uh, for it to be revealed. But this is now the time. And I explain verse by verse the book of Daniel. And you will be surprised to learn what Daniel tells us about prophecy and the events to come, such as the destiny of America. What's going to happen to America? You have some that says America is not in prophecy. It's not. Oh, yes, it is. Very much so. Also, it tells you the proximate time of the rapture. I'm not saying the day or the hour. No man knows the day or the hour, the Bible says. But, I, but we can know the approximate time of the rapture. And that's in this book and much more. You only have to pay for the shipping. You're not paying for the book. The book is free, but the shipping does cost. And the shipping is $5.95. So if you want this book, Simply go to our website, prophecyunveiled.com, and you can go to Daniel's Apocalypse, Revealing the End Times, and order your book that way. Or you can go to Contact and order your book and or, or request a copy. Well, until the next time, God loves you, and so do I. Stay well and stay on the alert. See you next week.